cats out the bag that Westerns can be fun. You know, I yeah. was never really attracted to Westerns. I thought they were too slow. And I mean, I watched them, um, but I never saw myself represented in them. And this is a movie that says, forget about what you know, we're in a new era. What's going on, guys? This is Brian Jones from PopCulture.com. And my guest today has appeared in a number of TV shows and films over the years, including the Twilight franchise, X-Men First Class, and the new movie, uh, The Heart of They Fall, Eddie Kathegi. Eddie, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you doing today? Doing good, man. I appreciate it. So as I mentioned, you're in the new movie, The Heart of They Fall. It's actually in theaters uh, today. It will be on Netflix November 3rd. Um, and you play the role of Bill Pickett. Uh, tell me this. How do you describe your character? Uh, Bill Pickett, he's um, first of all, he's he's based on a real historical figure, uh, a man who actually lived. Um, and in this in this film, he's been repurposed because he was a cowboy in real life. But in this film, he's an outlaw. Mm -hmm. um, this film is a it's a revenge tale. It's a classic Western and it repurposes real historical figures and puts them into our fictional telling. But Bill Pickett is on the good guy side um, and he's a loyal fella. You know, he's, uh, he's one of those individuals who puts the group above himself. No questions asked, ride or die. It's one of the reasons why I was attracted to, to playing a guy like this because I think civilizations have uh, been able to be saved by people who have this philosophy, who just are all about the whole. And this is Bill Pickett. Bill Pickett is the, the watcher. He's, uh, he's got everybody's back. He's, made, he's bringing up the rear. Um, he's just uh, he's just that dude. And that actually leads to my next question that you alluded to a little bit about you know, the character Bill Pick and how you're attracted to it. Um, what other factors um, when it comes to the movie? Um, what made you ultimately what made you want to be part of this film other than the character Bill Pickett? You know, just the film as a whole, it just it, it was a no brainer because of what the mission is, you know, um, not a lot of people know this, but one in four cowboys was black. Um, and we have been, you know, systematically erased from this part of history. Yeah. So, uh, it's, I think, I think what we're endeavoring to do is, you know, continue this conversation of inclusion, bringing a Western like this into the world is in many ways attempting to, uh, right the wrongs that have been done with our culture. Uh, so just, in the elevator pitch, I was in because I wanted to be a part of helping to tell a story like this. Did you know much about Bill Pickett along with, because it also talks about uh, Nat Love and Rufus Black. Uh, those are also um, you know, real people, but obviously the Hardly Falls is a fictional story. Did you know anything about those guys before taking the, the role of Bill Pickett? There's a few characters that I had a knowledge of and an intimate knowledge of just in my studies. And then most of the characters that appear in this in this film, I was learning about them for the first time. Bill Pickett yeah. was one of the characters that I was aware of. He's quite famous in, um, in, in the Black culture and uh, Bass Reeves. They've done a number of projects on Bass Reeves. Uh, Jim Beckworth was actually um, uh, stolen his his personality and, and the things that he'd done was actually stolen um, in early Western filmmaking and made white. So that's that's another one of the tragedies is what's happened is um, the, the the black cowboys were so proficient at what they did that there's the stories of of their exploits travel and they became famous. And then white writers got a hold of these stories and turned them into white characters for white audiences and hence the erasure. So um, all of these characters existed. Uh, and and I'm excited for audiences to watch this film, fall in love with a different character, because that's usually the way, you know, people that are attracted to different things. And then if you like that character, now you have the task of picking up a book and learning about that real historical figure. So it's like a built in education. Of course. And because of The Harder They Fall and you talked about how um, black cowboys are a big part of history. Do you think a movie like this will pave the way for more films about black cowboys moving forward? Absolutely. Because because now, you know, the cat's out the bag that that uh, we were there and the cat's out the bag that uh, James knows how to make a movie. Uh, cat's out the bag that Westerns can be fun. You know, I yeah. was never really attracted to Westerns. I thought they were too slow. And I mean, I watched them, um, but I never saw myself represented in them. And this is a movie that says, forget about what you know. We're in a new era. And I, I hope 
And I believe that there's going to be a lot more where this came from. And why should fans check out The Heart of the Ball? It has a great cast and it looks like a good story. But why should fans check out this new movie that's out today and will be out in Netflix next week? Well, it's it's an entertaining film. You know, I dare you to watch it and not be entertained. The music is the 10th lead in this film. There's, there's nine major characters. And I say that the music is the 10th lead. And in some respects, the, the music is the MVP. Um, it's tremendous. And if, if you feel safe enough to see it in the theater, I would encourage seeing it in the theater because there's nothing like watching the big action sequence and just being there with the, the, the hoof, the, the, the horse hooves on the, on the ground and the gunshots and the, and, the, and the music that carries the whole film. It's a cinematic experience. Um, you should see it because it's fun. Yeah, that definitely looks like a lot of fun. And uh, moving right along, as I mentioned, you're in uh, the movie X-Men First Class. Um, with the Marvel Cinematic Universe becoming so big over the years, would you like to get back into um, that mix uh, moving forward? That's why nobody's ever asked me that before. Oh, really? Um, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a kind of a, I don't know, it's a, I can't believe that nobody's asked me that before. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, right. You know, I, I, I do think that, um, and I don't think I'm alone, that Darwin was done quite dirty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, yeah. This is the mutant who uh, his superpower is that he can't die and he adapts to survive. And even in the comics, he dies and regenerates. So um, in some ways, I feel like uh, his his story is unfinished. Um, but I, I'm a fan of, of Marvel. I, I love all the stuff that they do. Um, and if there was a place for me in the future, of course, I would uh, be excited to potentially join. And what was the experience for you filming X-Men First Class? Because not only, and people, and, and there's a lot of people who love the comic books and comic book movies, but you were able to join an X-Men franchise that's already established itself over the years with the um, original X-Men, the three X-Men movies, and then the Wolverine spinoffs. What was the experience like uh, filming X-Men First Class? You know, it, it's it's a it's always um, a pinch yourself moment when you're working on a expensive, you know, highly produced production because things are practical. You know, you know, the, uh, the headquarters that that they're training us out of. Um, it felt like we were in the real um, uh, FBI, not FBI because it's, it's England, but their version. Of it, I forget what it was called. Um, but yeah. it's it feel, feels real, you know, and in the in going back to the heart of the fall. You're riding down these uh, western streets with the build. These are real buildings. These are these are real props, and 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 it's just the whole the whole deal is practical, and it does a wonderful job of grounding us into what it would be like. You know, you don't have to imagine because you're there. Of course, and uh, along with the work you've done in films over the years, you've done a lot of great work in TV, and you're going to be in season three of the Apple TV Plus series for all mankind. What can fans expect from your character as well as the new season of For All Mankind? My character is, um, his name is Dev Iesa. And, and it's, it's a difficult question to answer because yeah. there's danger of spoiling it. Um, of course, of course. Not too much, but he, I think I can say that he's tapped into something that nobody has been able to tap into or figure out. In, in our world, the show takes place in an alternate timeline mm -hmm. where Russia gets to the moon before the U.S. and the arms race never stops. Uh, so it's 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 set in a fictional timeline. And in this fictional timeline, this character, Dev Iesa, has figured out fusion, nuclear fusion, which we are all still trying to figure out. And if we can figure that out, uh, it's going to save our species. <laughs> um, yeah. So he's he's figured that out in in, in this story. So where you go from there, you have to tune in and watch. But I think that each season gets better and better uh, for all mankind. Um, and it was already a very strong show, but I think it's just getting stronger, stronger, stronger. And I think that when you watch this show in, in, in reverse, like if they get seven seasons and you get to watch all seven seasons in order, but together, you'll realize they created a masterpiece. This is what I believe. Definitely looking forward to that. And, and going back to movies here really quickly, um, as I mentioned, you were in the Twilight franchise. Um, did you think the films when um, they were originally released would become as big as they are now? You know, it, it's a roller coaster. There's three books. So when, they, when you hear that they're doing a the movie, you just assume that they're going to do all three of them. 
um, and that you just assume that they're going to be successful. I don't know where these thoughts come from, but you go, OK, I booked the trilogy. I'm in a trilogy. Yeah. Then you have then you have realized that the movies have to do good. And then you have realized if you are in the subsequent books and the films. Uh, so I went through the whole thing, but mm -hmm. it wasn't until Comic-Con where I think the whole cast understood how big it was going to be because people camped out for multiple days uh, and mm -hmm. just to see the actors. I had never experienced anything like that. Um, you know, thinking about, thinking back on those experiences, I mean, it was something. It was something. Yeah, and we live in a day and age where when it comes to TV shows and movies, they're always getting rebooted in some way, shape, or form. Do you think Twilight will be rebooted, uh, rebooted um, down the road, like maybe 10, 15 years from now? Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. it, it, it's a it's a it's a funny question but yeah because we, we don't we don't have a crystal ball but um i think so i think i think they'll they'll do it with a whole new cast you know it might take a long time to find the right actors to do it and and or you know what i think sh the writer was uh doing the whole entire story told from a different character's perspective so it might not even be as far in the future as we might think yeah, I can definitely see that. And the last question for me before I let you go is you've uh, obviously had done a lot in your career. Do you have some goals set for yourself um, moving forward, forward, whether it's uh, five, 10 years down the road? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just so humbled and, and grateful that I get to call myself uh, a working actor amongst the very privileged few who actually find success doing this. It's a hard, it's a hard hustle. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just, you know, one day at a time, but I do want to direct. Um, I'm writing some things now and hopefully I get a chance to produce them and make them. Um, but expanding the palette of storytelling, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've found success as an actor, but there's other ways to, to tell stories and to touch audiences. Yeah, well, all looking forward to that. Eddie, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Uh, good luck on everything. Continued success. And everyone, make sure to go see The Harley Fall in theaters now on a Netflix November 3rd. So, Eddie, thanks again. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, and for more on Eddie and all your favorite celebrities, be sure to keep it locked right here on popculture.com.